Yo, what's up everyone? It's Josh here back with another Keep It Techie video, helping you learn Linux and break into tech one skill at a time. And today I'm walking you through how to install and use Obsidian on Arch Linux. Now, before we get into it, I gotta say this real quick. A lot of folks watch these videos all the way through, which is awesome, but they forget to hit the like or dislike button. Now, if you're here to learn and this video helps you in any way, just click one. It seriously boosts engagement and it helps the algorithm show it to more people trying to get into Linux. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so I'm at obsidian.md. And of course I'll have the link down in the description of the video. But first off, if you haven't heard of Obsidian, it's a note-taking app built around Markdown and local first storage. Your notes live as plain text files in a folder on your machine. So you keep control. There's no cloud dependency unless you want it. But Obsidian isn't just another notepad. The real power comes from linking your notes together and visualizing your ideas as a network. And if you're a visual thinker, researcher, developer, or just someone trying to organize your brain, this app can definitely be a game changer in helping you do that. Now, I won't go through too much on the website, but there are multiple ways to get it installed on Linux. There's app images, there's snap packages, there's flat packs you can install it, but I'll be showing you guys on Arch Linux. And so I have the repository for Arch Linux open. And I just wanted to show you guys that it is in the main repository for Arch Linux. So that's real good for you guys that are on Arch or Arco Linux or any of those Arch variants. It's in the main Linux repository. You don't even have to install it from the AUR, although there is a bin for it in the AUR, but I recommend you just get it from the normal Arch Linux repository to get it installed. Now let's go down and switch over to my virtual machine so we can get it installed. What's up y'all? If you've been watching my channel for a minute, you already know I stay talking about Linux. And if you're looking for a solid, reliable enterprise Linux distro, let me put you on to Rocky Linux. This is the go-to replacement for CentOS and it's built for the community by the community. It's got everything you need for a stable and secure Linux experience, whether you're running servers, home labs, or enterprise workloads. And the best part is backed by CIQ, making sure it stays rock solid for the long haul. So if you're tired of these companies pulling a plug on your favorite distros, Rocky Linux is where you need to be. And I've covered Rocky Linux before, and trust me, it's worth checking out. So head over to rockylinux.org to learn more and get started. Keep it techy. Peace. So if you are on Arch Linux like me, all you have to do is open up your terminal and you can run your updates. All you have to do is run sudo pacman and then dash capital SYU and then press enter. And this will update your system. And I probably shouldn't have ran this. I forgot this system has a lot of updates for it. Probably it's going to press Y. Oh, it's only a few updates. So let's let it go through that right fast. A few updates for the system. And then let's go on and install obsidian so all you have to do is type sudo pacman and then dash capital s and then obsidian and i'm gonna tab it out make sure i spell it right and press enter and press y and it will install all its dependencies now one thing about obsidian it does need electron and if you guys have never installed electron before it is a big package so it'll take up a little bit of room on your operating system just so you guys know and i've actually installed applications from the au or using electron and electron building it from source is even worse it took me like 30 minutes to build this package from the au or that had electron as a dependency i quickly once that finished i quickly deleted that application because trust me i'm not trying to wait 30 minutes for one package to update on my system. And if you miss the spot where you have to type in your pseudo password and it times out on you, then you have to start all over. And I think I missed it like once or twice, which really got me upset. <laughs> just know that Electron is super huge. So if you're installing something from the AUR, just watch for that. It shouldn't be too bad on here, but I'll just let it run and we'll get Obsidian installed and I'll be back when it finishes. All right, so that didn't take long, but it basically installed the latest version 
package for Arch and you can launch it like any other application from your desktop environment. Now you can still use the app image or the flat pack or the snap if you're on a different distribution or if you need a portable version. But for us Arch folks, Pac-Man is the cleanest way to go. Now with snap, just to point this out to you guys, if you're on like Ubuntu or Debian based, or if you have Snap installed, you guys know that Snap was created by Canonical. And so Obsidian hasn't gone through the process, whatever process they go through to verify that the Snap package is safe to be put into the Snap repository. So you have to use a couple of options when you're installing it. I believe one of them is dangerous and the other one is dash classic. So just to be aware that that lets it access the file system where your notes will live. And so that's why I did this install on Orch because it's added to the main repository. Now let's get down and showing you guys how to use this thing. First things first, let's go down and open up Obsidian. And all you have to do is let's go down and close this terminal right fast so we can exit out. And then let's look for it under our menu and let's click under all applications and scroll down look for O, or we could type it in let's see it should be under here there we go obsidian there we go boom and the first thing you'll see is this vault setup screen now let me explain to you what a vault is in obsidian it's just a folder on your system and this will hold all your notes and you can create a new one or open an existing one you already have notes in but for this demo, let's go down and create one from scratch. And so let's click create new vault boom and we can give it a name. You can give it whatever you want. I'm gonna just put KIT dash note. And then what you want to do is choose a location. So all you have to do is hit browse. And what I'm gonna do is put mine in my documents directory and I'll create a folder under here called notes. And that will be my vault. So create and open and so that's our location so home josh documents and then i have a notes directory and then all you have to do is click create and that will create our vault now let's go down and fill up the screen so you guys can see the full thing and let's create our first note and walk through how obsidian works so right here is just a welcome screen it'll walk you guys through make a note of something, create a link or try the importer if you need to. When you're ready, delete this note and make the vault your own. I'm gonna just close this. We don't need it. And you can go right here on the left just to show you guys. You can right click and you can delete that welcome note just to clear it. Up. Or you can go over here, click on the actual notes and then the options over here on the right, you can delete the file as well and that will delete that note for you as well. Now, one cool thing about Obsidian, there are some shortcuts. So control N will create a new note. So if you hit control plus N, that will create you a new note. Or you could just click up here. There is a new note button. You can also create folders that hold notes. And that's just a good way of organizing your notes once you figure out where they all go and what you're gonna do with now let's name our new notes and I'm gonna just keep it at the theme of this video. So Obsidian Overview and press enter and let's go down and create us a title. It's basically like typing in Markdown. So if you put the pound sign or the hashtag, which young people call it today, that will make a title. So let's go sharpen your thinking. And then boom, let's type another line. And then Obsidian is the private and flexible writing app that adapts to the way you think and let's put a space here just to make it not so close to the title and let's say we want to i don't know make a couple words bold so let's say private i'm gonna highlight private like i said it's markdown so if you understand markdown and if you start learning these shortcuts in the application then you'll get it is super simple. So if you do control B, this will bold something. So let's bold private and let's bold flexible as well. So private and flexible. Control B, that'll bold that as well. Boom, good to go. So now we got bold text right there. And so pretty much all the formatting is readable even outside of the app because it's essentially a text file. You can open it up within your text reader. Of course, it'll show you know, the markdown formatting with the 
hashtags and the stores and all that stuff when you have bold and all the different signs that make things show up in work time. but you can still look at all the text and see all your notes now let's go down and create a new note and here's where the magic starts let's say you want to create a note called three laws of motion and i kind of went through and found some examples of some stuff to actually talk about in this video in order to create some notes that will be interesting to put together in a video for you guys to I don't know, see something, some note taking, especially for someone, let's say in college and you're taking a class and you have this application on your computer. So let's go down and write out the laws of motion. So the laws of motion or three laws stated by Sir Isaac Newton that describes the relationship between the motion and object the forces acting on it. and you guys probably if you're in college you probably type way better than me or faster than me let's go on and fix that so that's cool it also has spell check in it as well so that's super cool then also let's fix that acting on it now let's go down and close this one because what i want to do is show you guys how to link to there's three laws of motion so we can close this one and let's go down and create a new notes and let's name this law of inertia so law of inertia boom and then we can type something in here is so the law of inertia is one of the and we're going to link it to our laws of motion and one thing you have to do is put it within brackets so you have to put two brackets there so two opening brackets and it'll automatically bring up all your other notes and all you have to do is select them so all you have to do is click three laws of motion and that'll allow you to add a link there and boom we're good so we have that linked and one cool thing about it once you have it linked you can just hold the control key just like in the terminal you can highlight it and this will show you those notes or you can click on it and it'll take you to those notes and open it up if you want to so super dope. and another cool thing about it you can even link to notes that don't exist yet and basically all you have to do is just put a link name and obsidian will create the notes when you click on it so whatever you name it it will create that note and then you can go in and start typing whatever you want to type within that note super cool right now let's talk about finding your way around now we have this three laws of motion open but if you look down here at the bottom you'll see where it says one backlink if you click there it'll show you every note that's linked to this one so let me click it right fast you can see that it will show you each one of them that are linked so law of inertia it'll show you all of them if they if it's more than one and that's super helpful for going the other way in a conversation or a topic but the real cool feature is the local graph and let me go down and close this panel on the side but if you click the three dots up here at the right where it says more options and if you go down to open linked view and then open open local graph this will open up the graph like we've seen in the beginning but you can see the links you see how it links you could drag things around you could zoom in zoom out you could click to jump between ideas which is super cool see how it opens it up or switch back and forth so just imagine if you got like a bunch of notes in here they have filters up here and so this is where obsidian really shines when you store it implementing a whole bunch of notes within your vault now i'll probably get asked this a lot after uploading this video how do i sync my notes across devices because there is a app that you can use on your phone for obsidian as well obsidian stores everything locally by default but you've got several options there is an obsidian sync but that is a paid add-on for developers so you have to check that out on their website in order to figure out how to get access to it but you can also use one of your cloud providers when you i'm gonna minimize it right fast but let's open up our folder right fast our home directory let's go into josh right fast and documents this is essentially your vault see as you can see that's all your files right there and if you have a connection to a cloud you can sync this to one of your clouds and then you can also sync it down to your phone or sync it to another phone 
or another tablet or something, you can open it up in that application as well on that side. And if you create new notes in the other Obsidian, it'll sync it to here and you can open it up on your desktop. So that's one cool way of actually syncing it across multiple devices. And then there's another way, let's say you just work from home, you could sync it locally using things like sync thing. I made a video on that. So if you have a local NAS or something, you can use sync thing. You can sync using a server or something. It'll sync it to a certain location or general location where everything has access to it. But you can also even version control it using Git. But whatever method you choose, just remember that syncing isn't the same as a backup. If you care about your notes, set up a proper backup that copies your vault to another location, preferably offline or external. Now, before we wrap up, there's one last quick tip I wanted to show you guys in Obsidian, and that is themes. So if we look down here on the left hand side. There is the little wheel. This is all your settings. You may want to go in here and check this out, but you can go under appearance and you'll see options to switch themes or install new ones from the community. There's also dark mode, minimalist setups, crazy cyberpunk layouts. Basically, you name it, it's all in there. You can also toggle on community plugins later on if you want to extend functionality once you get a little better with using the application or learning the application. You can change fonts, all that good stuff just to make it your own. But I'll go through a lot more of that in part two showing you guys how to customize it a little better. And I'll also incorporate my notes into it so I can show you guys how deep this thing can go. All right, so that's a wrap on getting started with Obsidian on Arch Linux or on Linux in general. We installed it, set up a vault, created it, and linked some notes, explored the graph, and talked about syncing and backups. And if you're just getting started with note taking, or second brains, this is a great tool to dig into. I personally use it in order to brainstorm new ideas that I'm working on, as well as consolidating all my notes that I have for different projects that I'm working on. But anyway, again, if you made it this far, don't forget to like the video. Even a dislike tells the algorithm something. So I appreciate any interaction. And if you got any questions, go on, drop them down in the comments or check out the Obsidian help documents for more advanced stuff. I hope you guys have a productive week. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Keep it techie. Peace. Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it, because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech.